I'm David Ray, and I'm a data analyst for SailGP. During the event, we uh, monitor that everything on the boats is going well. Our role is to make sure all the dashboards are running, modify the dashboards uh, to the team's needs, and just uh, continue delivering insights to the, um, to the coaches and the people on the water to make sure they, they have what they need to perform. Chicago was run on a lake. So uh, the water uh, is actually very different to any other venue. The foils will act differently in fresh water. Like less uh, water density means that for, at the same speed, you'll get less lifts on your foils. The second day in Bermuda was actually pretty similar to first day of racing in Chicago in terms of winds and uh, conditions. So it was interesting to go back and see takeoff speeds were between four and five kilometers per hour uh, difference. So you had to be four or five kilometers per hour faster in Chicago to take off. And uh, also your minimum boat speeds had to be that margin faster in maneuvers to, to keep the boat flying. Thanks to the Oracle Cloud, the teams can have direct feedback to the coach boat and uh, between races, the coaches are able to uh, give them precise uh, comments on how the boat is set up, how well they're, um, they're sailing the boat, how high they're flying compared to the others. They, the coaches have five minutes to give feedback to the teams between races, so they need to be on point and they need to know exactly what to say. Going over the data is crucial for teams um, just to learn about how they can uh, implement what the better teams are doing into their uh, routine and just learn from uh, maybe their mistakes, learn from others' mistakes, which is probably uh, as important because you don't get to do the mistake, but you get to have the lesson from it. Yeah, so the CellGP Insights platform lets you uh, get uh, live data or the data as it's happening synced with your your video um, and the replay of the of the racing. You can also just choose what boat you want to, to follow. So um, that can also be useful for teams. So the ride height is uh, how high the boat is uh, is flying above the water. It's measured between the bottom of the of the boat to the surface of the water. Ideally, uh, you want to fly as high as possible. That would be between 1.1, 1.2 meters. And beside that, you have the ride time, which is percentage of how long they've been flying. You want to keep that as close as 100% because uh, flying above the water means we have less drag. So you'll see the better teams have a ride time nearly always spot on 100%. The right height was a, was probably a bit lower in Chicago because of the chop of the water. The teams actually trying to sail a bit safer as they were learning the, the venue and uh, just trying to get over the chop. Australia and uh, Canada uh, had a great um, consistent right height, whereas I think uh, Switzerland and uh, and surprisingly on some races, New Zealand did struggle as well with, uh, with keeping a consistent uh, flying height. So, and you could see that uh, impact the results they had on that regatta. The wind speed is a true wind speed the, the boats are sailing through. Fight speed is how fast the boat is uh, going through the water. So a better boat speed is good to have, but uh, you have to also balance your angle to the winds. So yeah, better heading compared to the course axis will be uh, definitely a game changer. Um, so these boats, because they're on foils and have so much power with the um, uh, rigid wing, they're able to go faster than the than the wind speeds. They get to a point where, yeah, they are able to use that wind they create from their speed to just go faster than the wind. So that's why on the first, on second day, sorry, of um, of Chicago, uh, it was a very light day, but the boats were still able to go. Uh, four times uh, the speed of the wind and get up to 50 or 60 kilometers per hour on what would be considered in, uh, in traditional sailing a, a, a very light day. I think the ve venue was pretty atypical with the starting zone, let's say, being cut in two with uh, one uh, zone that's much closer to the line. The biggest difference is that uh, you, the time you're going to start uh, building speed the group that will be closer, it's way easier to get um, your timing right because you're closer, you're more controlled. Uh, it'll be harder for them to get better speeds. In the opposite uh, camp, we'll say the people that are outside, it'll be easier for them to get a better speed because they're just uh, launching from uh, far, further away. But it will be harder for them to 
get to the line uh, on point and maybe even find some space if the uh, boats that are closer to the line just choose to completely block off the, the line then you'll probably find yourself in a difficult position. Canada just nailed it every time. They were able to um, start right on time and um, with, with great speed and find a position but yeah we all know phil loves that kind of start he even when it was harder to do and there was no you know the whole fit was blocking the line he'd be able to put it off you definitely like race one is definitely telling of uh, how hard it was i think you could see everybody was wiping out at some point and then yeah the surprise is probably how much difficulties team usa ran into and especially on the first day um they uh just struggled keeping the boat uh, in line and uh, the boat uh, flying stably. Uh, there was a, the, a new flight control line that I think led them to set up the boat in a more conservative way compared to other teams. Yeah, you could definitely see that it wasn't the, the right route to take. Uh, other teams gave more control on uh, to the board, to the flight controller compared to Team USA. And um, yeah, that did not work for, for them on uh, in choppy conditions for sure. I'm sure everybody learned from it, uh, not only Team USA, which is a good thing as well in CLGP. If we learned, everybody learned that that was not the, the route to go. And uh, well, unfortunately, yeah, the USA were on the wrong side of the learning, uh, of, the, of the lesson, let's say. What I think is that uh, getting a better start for Australia just le always leaves them to, to win the race. The fact that Australia were able to to go in front, they were just able to choose a better, um, better route and uh, limit the number of maneuvers. So a maneuver is where you're going to lose a lot of uh, or give a lot of ground to opponents. Keep that um, number of maneuvers low, opponents will have a hard time to, to catch ground. So yeah, they kept a great job at that. And um, yeah, boat speed, was they didn't need boat speed to, to go around everybody or to overtake, they just um, were able to sail sail a higher mode. So that means you you don't focus on boat speed, but focus more on your angle to the, to the next boy. And by getting a better angle, you're just going a shorter distance around the course and make, uh, make it hard for your opponents to sail around you.